Today's video is brought to you by TensorArt. TensorArt is a free, stable diffusion-based AI image generator. You may have seen image generators like this before and felt a bit intimidated by all the tech lingo. I'm using TensorArt to demystify all that tech speak and explore the magic behind the AI image generation process. Today's guide is for beginners, so open up TensorArt and follow along. Make sure to use the invite code making the photo. Together we'll talk about models and LORAs, sampling methods, steps, and scales. All those things that make stable diffusion-based image generation so flexible. By the end of this video, you'll be a pro. You'll know what the options do and if they are the right fit for your AI-generated images. TensorArt is sponsoring this video and you'll get a good look at the many tools that are at your fingertips. Once you wrap your head around the tools, you'll see how stable diffusion models can make more personalized works of art. If you're new to Stable Diffusion, it's an open source AI technology that creates images from text prompts. You give it a text like a sunset over the ocean, and it generates an image. It uses a process called diffusion to generate the images. Diffusion is a process of adding noise to an image and then gradually reducing the noise over time. Stable Diffusion is open source. This means that anyone can access and use it. Stable Diffusion forms the backbone of many AI image generators like TensorArt. There are a lot of ways to personalize Stable Diffusion, but some of those powerful tools aren't very intuitive for a beginner. Once you know how to use the tools, you'll find Stable Diffusion to be flexible, and it gives you a lot of control over your images. Let's jump in with models. Stable Diffusion version 1.5 or 2.1 are base models. The newest version is Stable Diffusion XL, but a lot of creators like the aesthetic look of version 1.5. The base models are a good place to start. But what are these other models offered by TensorArt? To get a specific style or subject, creators fine tune or create a specific model for different types of images. For instance, if you like to create vintage cats, you train a model on a bunch of pictures of vintage cats. Now, whenever you prompt, you'll get back vintage cats. If you prompt for a high fashion model, you'll get an image that includes vintage cats. Anyone can train a stable diffusion model and many creators share their models for you to use. Some models are better at generating specific types of images such as landscapes or portraits. And TensorArt has dozens of these models. Some of the most popular focus on creating realistic images, anime, cartoon, and fantasy images. Popular models are Dream Shaper, anything, and open journey. Choose a model that matches what you're trying to create. If you need a model that is realistic, then you may want to use a model that was trained on a data set of real world images. If you want anime, choose a model trained on anime style images. But bear in mind that many models are created in response to not safe for work filters. Creators want to make edgier images with sex or gore. These are often blocked by the mainstream AI image generators like Midjourney and Leonardo AI. Speaking of fine tuning, let's talk about LoRa's. If you've tried generating images and ended up with unrealistic Picasso-like results with weird hands and face distortions, then LoRa's are your new best friend. They're small files that tweak details in your models. There can be LoRa's for anything, poses, clothing, emotions, art mediums, specific objects, one of the most popular LoRa's in TensorArt is Add More Details. You can adjust how much of this fine-tuned style you want to add using an easy slider in TensorArt. You can even add more than one LoRa and mix the styles together. VAE is optional and usually improves fine details like eyes. Think of it as the icing on the cake that helps your images stand out with more vibrant colors and crisper details. In TensorArt, the default is automatic VAE, so it's trying to choose one that will make your images look the best, but you do have choices. The names are very descriptive, so you'll need to do a little bit of experimentation. A detailer or after detailer enhances details, especially in the face and hands. It detects the faces and hands and then impates 
or fills in any missing or blurry areas. A detailer also uses a face detection model to identify and correct any facial distortions or artifacts. Sensitivity lets you control how sensitive the tool is to faces. More sensitivity and it will be looking very closely for faces, even if they're in the background. And you have an extra prompt box if you want to make adjustments to the face, like adding freckles or fixing this two-headed vintage cat. In Tensor Art, you can click A Detailer on an image or open the A Detailer tab. In the prompt box, you describe what you want to see, but in the negative prompt box, you describe what you don't want to see. I have an entire video on how to use negative prompts in Stable Diffusion. There are some common types of negative prompts. Some of the most common have to do with body distortions. For instance, no deformed or disfigured hands or faces, extra limbs, you know, that sort of thing. And many creators use the same negative prompts on all of their images. Image to image means that you give the AI an image along with the text prompt to show the AI what type of image you want. By dragging an image into the box, you're saying to the AI, I want my image to look like that. Without changing the interior design prompt, I'll add an image with some colors and a brick wall. Notice that the AI picked up on the general layout of the room and some of the colors, though it blanked a little bit on the brick wall. Denoising is a way of telling the AI how much you wanted to pay attention to the image. One means to ignore the image and really do its own thing. Zero means to essentially replicate the image as closely as the AI can. Default in Tensor Art is 0.5, and that's a really good place to start. So use low denoise if you just want slight variations to your image. Set it high if you want more variability. I have a couple of videos on how to use images as part of your prompt. ControlNet is a specialized form of image-to-image -image prompting. It lets you capture a pose or a composition from an existing image. It's a whiz at detecting edges or human body poses and fuses that information with your prompt. You're not copying the whole image, just the essential composition or body pose. This leaves you free to change other image details. Upload an image with a pose or composition you want to mimic. In the text prompt, be specific about the alterations you'd like to see. When you upload a reference image, you can see the pose or details extracted from the original image. Popular control net models are open pose and canny edge detection, but with tensor art, you're a little bit spoiled for choice. Aspect ratio is the shape of your image. The default aspect ratio in tensor art is 2 by 3 portrait, but you don't have to stick with this. You can make your image wide by switching to a landscape orientation or you can click on custom and use the sliders to specify an aspect ratio. Tensor Art will make an image up to 1024 by 1024 pixel square. While we're talking about aspect ratios, let's talk about the high res tool. High res comes to the rescue when you're creating non-square images. The AI prefers making square images at a default resolution of 512 by 512 pixels. Want a tall or long image or one with higher resolution? That's when you need high res fix. Essentially, high res fix first crafts a low resolution image, and then it scales up this image to the resolution or the aspect ratio that you want. This process significantly reduces the chances of oddities in your final piece, like multiple heads or repetitive patterns. Denoising and high res fix operates like it does with the image to image prompting. It's your say on how much variation you want between the first low resolution image and the high resolution output. The default in Tensor Art is 0.5, and that's a safe bet for starters. As for the best upscaler, there's no clear winner. It's a game of trial and error to find your sweet spot. For the next tools, you have to know a little bit about what's going on under the hood of the AI image generator. AI image generators sculpt images from noise. The AI starts with a random mess of noise and chisels away at it step by step until we're left with a gorgeous, clean image. There are many ways the AI can make an image from noise. The process used is called the sampling method. In Tensor Art, the default setting is a Euler A, but you have other choices. Advanced Stable Diffusion creators will notice a difference between the sampling methods, but plenty of Stable Diffusion users keep the default. 
but if you want to change the sampling method, there are some popular choices. Steps are related to sampling method. It's the number of passes the AI makes, gradually reducing noise at each stage. More steps equate to a gradual noise reduction, like sandpapering wood for a smoother finish. It's precise, but demands more computer power. Fewer steps are quick and efficient, but the leap between stages might lead to some hiccups in the image generation. Tensor Art sets you at 20 steps by default, and that's a balance that usually yields good results. The CFG scale is also known as the Prompt Guidance Scale. You're telling the AI how faithful to be to your prompt. It's all about finding that sweet spot between fidelity to your idea and the quality of the image. Lower CFG values might give you a stunning picture that's a bit off prompt, while higher values stay true to your prompt at the risk of a lower aesthetic appeal, especially if you haven't used any style words. In Tensor Art, the CFG scale ranges from 0 to 30, with 7 being the typical setting. Consider the CFG scale as your creativity control. It's your way of guiding the AI's imagination. If the default setting of 7 isn't hitting the mark, don't be afraid to play around with this slider to achieve your perfect balance. When the AI kicks off the image generation process, it blends your prompt with a random image or seed. For most creators, the random seed works just fine. If you run a prompt several times, the image will be different because the AI is picking a fresh new random seed each time. But if you get an image that you really like, you can keep that seed, lending a certain consistency to your future creations. Let's take a trip back to one of my previous interior design images. I'll set everything up exactly as it was and copy the seed. This time though, let's switch to a different room. Because I use the same seed, the rooms have a unified aesthetic, making them look like they belong to the same stylish home. Remember that while most folks stick to the default settings, you have the power to tweak these controls and experiment. Tensor Art has all the tools you need to master AI image generation. You should feel more comfortable navigating the robust toolbox that Tensor Art offers and have the knowledge to leverage the power of stable diffusion to create your unique art. Each tool and concept we covered today holds a key to personalizing your AI image generation and making it a true reflection of your unique creative vision. So grab your newfound knowledge and open up Tensor Art and start exploring. Remember, it's all about practice and exploration and not being afraid to make adjustments and try new things. Let us know your favorite tips and tricks for creating AI images in the comments below. Share your images and don't forget to tag us at Making the Photo. This is Janet Making the Photo. Let's make something amazing together. <laughs>